Good morning. Welcome to Our Lady of the Assumption. We're so glad you joined us. Uh, this is the 20th Sunday in Ordinary Time. This Mass is offered for William Payne. Uh, our celebrant this morning is Father Ed, once again assisted by Deacon Ed. And this morning we're going to begin with There is a Wideness in God's Mercy. You should be able to find a link to the music if you look at the frame or two below where you are now. There's a wideness in God, God's mercy. Please lift your voices. There's a wideness in God's mercy, like the wideness of the sea. There's a kindness in God's justice, which is more than liberty. There is plentiful redemption in the blood that has been shed. There is joy for all. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate for the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God on the highest, and on Amen. earth peace, peace to people of good will. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, you we glorify you. you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. <clears throat> o God, who art prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love so that loving you in all things, and above all things, we may attain your promises, which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> First reading, a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, observe what is right, do what is just, for my salvation 
is about to come. My justice about to be revealed. The foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, ministering to him, loving the name of the Lord, and becoming his servants, all who keep the Sabbath free from profanation and hold to my covenant, them I will bring to my holy mountain and make joyful in my house of prayer their burnt offerings and sacrifices. They will be acceptable on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? For the gifts and the call of God are irreconcilable. Just as you once obeyed God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now disobeyed in order that, by virtue of the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God delivered all to disobedience, that he might have mercy upon all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Hallelujah. 
Jesus proclaimed the gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, you o Lord. Lord. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. Jesus' disciples came and asked him, Send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did Jesus' homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, It is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, Please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps. Then Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ. Our gospel reading today seems a little bit strange when we first hear it. Is Jesus really calling the poor woman a dog and being culturally insensitive? Not really, but we need to look at Isaiah's reading to get a better understanding. The Israelites were a chosen people who had a special relationship with God, and they understood this, sometimes looking down on the Gentiles around them. But in the first reading from Isaiah, the prophet tells the people of Israel, observe what is right, do what is just. And then, the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, them I will bring to my holy mountain. Although the people of Israel were specially chosen, salvation was not just for them but for all others as well. And if they came to, if the others came to accept Yahweh as true God, then they would be saved. And with that, Israel is called to be a light to these Gentiles. And as Bishop Barron points out, the Israelites were chosen and were special, not for themselves, but to be an example, an attraction for the world. Salvation is not for a chosen few. It is for everyone who follows God's will. And we come to the Gospel reading. In this reading, Jesus has ventured out into pagan, from Jewish territory into pagan territory, the cities, the Greek cities of Tyre, Tyre and Sidon. Following a confrontation with Pharisees from Jerusalem, who refused to accept his him, and that ended with him calling them blind guides. And so, as he traveled through this pagan area, a Canaanite woman called out to him. The Canaanites, pagan people, had a long history, more than 800 years of conflict with Israel. This woman, however, wasn't concerned about differences. She was concerned about her daughter, who was possessed by a demon. And unlike the Pharisees, she recognized Jesus, calling out, have pity on me, Lord, son of David. Although a Gentile and a pagan, she saw with the eyes of faith. Surprisingly, 
Her pleas are met with silence from Jesus. And so with, she continued her pleas, however, and the disciples, obviously uncomfortable, told Jesus, send her away. He did not. But then he replied to the disciples and to the woman, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Simply put, he tells them that his focus is on the Jewish people, not Gentiles. But even after hearing this explanation, she knelt down before him saying, Lord, help me. And then he answers her, it is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. At first glance, it seems like an insult, but Jesus is using proverbial language to describe the situation. The children, of course, are the, the Jewish people, members of God's covenant family, and Jews refer to Gentiles as dogs because of the contrast between their well-developed ethical system and the immorality of the pagan cultures surrounding them. But here, instead of being culturally insensitive, Jesus is making a point. He understands that his first mission is to the Jewish people, and he had just been rejected by the Jewish leaders. But here was this Gentile woman asking for his help. And in fact, the original Greek word used indicates a household pet, not what we might call a street dog or a, you know, just a, a wild dog. So what he is saying is that in family life, the children are to be fed before the pet dog. And the woman understands this and reminds Jesus, please Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps. In humility, she is willing to think of herself as undeserving as a dog compared to the children of the family. And she was undeserving, but so were the Jews, and so are us. Much like the story of the centurion, this Canaanite woman has the faith that even the Pharisees did not have. And her faith is rewarded, as Jesus said, O woman, great is your faith, let it be done for you as you wish. And from that hour, her daughter was cured. So although Jesus came to minister to the Jewish people first, this message and various other stories of his interactions with the Gentiles and Samaritans show him reaching out and responding to their needs and requests. Our second re reading continues this theme Paul was an observant Jewish scholar who had been chosen by Christ to be the apostle to the Gentiles. And Paul tells the people that the reason for the mission to the Gentiles was because the Jewish people had rejected Christ and had not been the light and example to the nations. So what does this mean for us? We have been blessed to have been born into families in the U.S. in which we have much materially. We have been selected by God to receive the gift of the Catholic faith by baptism. Like the ancient Israelites, we have been selected to be part of a special community. But again, remember that we have been selected not for ourselves, but for others, so that we can be a light to the world. In baptism, we have all been made priest, prophet, and king. Priest to offer sacrifice for the people of God. Prophet to know the word of God and to spread it by our words and actions. And king to offer leadership to the people of God. This is our call as baptized Christians. But also, we are not to look down on other people because of different religion or culture, or for any other differences. All of us are children of God and deserving of respect and support. Like Jesus, who reached out to Samaritans and Gentiles, we have an obligation to help all of those in need, 
even though they may be different from us in religion or culture, are separated from us by other differences. We will now recite the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was in the of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified and was his blood. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in the world with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the cross. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We will now have the prayers of the faithful. For our Archbishop Gregory and the Auxiliary Bishops Joel and Bernard, that their faith and joy as they proclaim the good news of salvation attract unbelievers into God's loving arms. We praise the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That people of every race and culture, that they seek to understand those who are different from themselves. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That every immigrant, alien, and marginalized member of society be treated with dignity as a beloved <coughs> child of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For the school leaders, our students, and their families of the Catholic schools of the Archdiocese of Atlanta, as they begin the new school year, that our Lord bless and protect them throughout this entire school year. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For those persons inflicted with the coronavirus, those who care for them and their families and friends, that they will feel the healing power of God. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For our first communionites and their families, that they continue to receive the blessings poured out for all in the Eucharist. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the cause of the canonization of Father Jean-Claude Collin, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing for all who experience the shadows of sickness and pain, especially for Mark Finch and all those on our prayer list and in our book of intentions. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those in our community who have died, especially Brenda Christian Solly, mother of Matthew Christian, and for those in England in our columbarium, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Father, let us pray also for Father Dennis Stike, former Marist Provincial, 
who has been diagnosed with COVID. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. And for all the intentions we hold in the quiet of our heart, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, we thank you for the gifts you've given to us. Open us up to all those who may be strangers in our lives, that we welcome them as Jesus welcomed strangers and foreigners. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed is God forever. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed is God forever. And Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. And pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the grace and glory of his name. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of all. by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> And through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And now let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Bread of life, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. On you stay, you take away the sins 
behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, O Lord, that conform to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be, 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 behold the Lamb of God. No. The Lord be with you. <laughs> and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. When you tell a joke, tell it in an elevator. That way it'll be good on many levels. <laughs> And as we go out to enjoy this beautiful day on every level, let us now sing the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is justice and joy, for Jesus restores what sin would destroy. God's power and glory in Jesus we know, and here and here after the kingdom shall grow. The kingdom of God is mercy and grace. The captives are freed, the sinners find place. The outcasts are welcome, God's banquet to share. And hope is awakened. 